I can noodle. Oh, noodle. Yeah. <laughs> So we are at Pine Mountain Settlement School in the in the weaving room, and next door is the natural education room. There's a bunch of turtles next door, <laughs> and Pine Mountain is dedicated to um, environmental education about Appalachian about the Appalachian Mountains and the flora and the fauna, and and I think uh, if the more we know about what we got, the better we'll take care of it. And I think they, they, they they follow through with that mission really well. And they, they teach the traditional arts of the mountains um, to young people. Uh, next week I'm coming back here to teach um, a little dulcimer lesson to a bunch of teenagers who built their own dulcimer right here out of native hardwoods from Appalachia. Um, and so you should look up Pine Mountain Settlement School if you're interested in that kind of stuff. <laughs> musical memories were probably we mom would buy these like classical music CDs and we would listen to them while we were stringing beans or matching socks <laughs> and we would listen to like beautiful classical pieces and a lot of Claire de Lune and a lot of beautiful like meditative classical music I remember very specifically that and then um, the second album that I 
uh, have very specific musical memories with is the third time out gospel album. But it's just like, so those, those like four part gospel harmonies are just branded into my brain. <laughs> Dulcimer came into my life um, through my grandfather on my dad's side, and he uh, worked for Alcoa Steel Plant in Maryville, Tennessee. And when he retired, he took up like um, oil painting and woodworking, 
and he played the harmonica and he was just dibbling and dabbling and like little fun things as he was retiring and he took up woodworking and he built a dulcimer and he built it backwards <laughs> like he but like where the headstock is he put it at the at the, at the wrong end <laughs> but um yeah and, and i think he built that probably before i was born and then stashed it away in my grandparents house and then um they found mom and dad found it when i was like seven seven or eight years old and they knew that i had some musical interest um uh I like to sing in church, you know, like every, like every good Southern, Southern Christian girl, you know, you got to sing in church. And, uh, and so they knew that I was interested in that and they plopped the dulcimer in my lap. Yes and no. Dulcimer came really intuitively to me, and I think because I started so young and my brain was still very elastic. <laughs> and then as I've gotten older, picking up banjo and guitar and upright bass and stuff, it comes a little harder. Um, as an adult, you know, as when I was a teenager and starting to learn those instruments, and as an adult, you know, still learning and always trying to learn more. Um, I wish I had played banjo and guitar and stuff when I was seven, like Dulcimer. Um, but uh, yeah, I never want to stop learning, you know, I never want to get to the point where I'm like, I'm done, I've completely finished my musical journey. I always want to learn new instruments. Um, so yeah, it's been, dulcimer started pretty intuitively and the dulcimer itself is a very intuitive instrument. Um, it's open tuning, the fretboard pattern is diatonic, it doesn't have chromatic notes on it. So it's pretty intuitive for most anybody to sit down and play good music on the instrument. Um, that's one of the things I really like about the dulcimer. Now that I'm a married girl, go barefoot. 
very best kind But now that I'm a married girl Run ragged all the time Wish I was a single girl again And I wish I was a single girl again I started going to like old time music festivals like I started playing dulcimer and then that was sort of like opened cracked the door into this huge world of traditional Appalachian music and I hadn't even really it, it just it just hadn't even occurred to me you know before that and and that led me down the path of learning Appalachian ballads and like old time fiddle tunes and like it just really broadened my perspective on, on, on what the dulcimer could do. And it got me really excited about playing music. And, and it was fun to play dulcimer by myself, you know, as a teenager and as a young person. But then going to like an old time fiddlers convention where you're surrounded by hundreds of fiddlers and there's banjo players and there's, and you play all night long. And that was what really got me excited about playing music, playing with community. And I think that's really special about Appalachian music in general because you know half of the joy from playing these instruments come from playing the instruments but the other half is just the sense of community that come that comes built in with old time Appalachian music in a way that is really unique to from other styles and other genres.
in music that is that is people music, the music like folk music, music of of working class people, music is not just entertainment. It's it's a tool. It's a tool for social change, and a tool um, for preserving stories, and uplifting the narratives of regular folks. It's not about it's not about popular music in the sense of like what songs are going to sell the most, but like or what songs are going to be the most popular to the, to the biggest amount of people um, with Appalachian music, and especially Appalachian music pre-radio days. It was it was music that was fully existed to serve the people that made it, and it was about telling stories and creating change and saying you know uh, and resisting coal companies and resisting. Um, uh, antiquated ways of thinking, um, and and in, in a big way, I think music is a tool and it's a weapon, and it's a comfort in in Appalachian culture in a way that is really special.